there welcome to the watercolor for beginners so I want to before we start with any classes I want to introduce to you the different kinds of materials that you would be needing for your water class so first of all I'm going to be talking about the different kinds of um, watercolors that you can get I'm not going to be brand specific so I'm just introducing to you different types so please keep in mind this is not a sponsored ad for specific projects. Okay, so the first one, this is one that you may have seen um, from your childhood, specifically. Uh, maybe you are familiar with a 12 set or a single set of eight. Um, where I'm from, we call these pan watercolors, P-A-N, pan watercolors. And basically, it's got all the colors here. It's very simple. It's like a powdery form. It's dry. And you basically need to wet it and then you can paint it. This is quite suitable for younger learners. I would say anyone who's a child, this is more suitable for that. I would say from the ages of 5 to 12, this is highly recommended. It's inexpensive. You can get cheap quality versus medium quality to expensive quality. It depends on your budget. Um, particularly the one that I've got here. Um, does not come with the separate goodies that come out. That's quite different. So this is quite suitable for young children and for young learners to use. The next set, um, kind of mid-range. Now I want to be very clear on this when you purchase watercolor set. So I do have a personal favorite brand. This is just a student brand I want to show you here. So these are what I would refer to as transparent watercolors. They come in a tube. So this is unopened. I'm going to open it for you. So basically, um, one thing that you need to be quite careful about when you buy this, especially if you're going to an art shop, please specify transparent watercolors. Sometimes I don't know why that has happened. It has happened to me twice. On occasion, I would be buying a product that says watercolor, but when I actually used it, it has a kind of gouache quality. Gouache is a completely different paint. Don't know why they would say watercolors on it. It's really bizarre. So make sure that when you do buy watercolor in a tube, that it says transparent on the box. That's very important, especially for tube watercolor. There is a brand which I'm going to mention um, that I prefer to use and which is a safer option. It's by Windsor Newton. Windsor and Newton, that is a well-known brand. I'm not going to say that you have to use that, but if you can afford it, it would be the better version. Um, I personally do prefer to use that, but again, depending on your budget, um, either way. Okay, so these are probably used by a lot of students, especially I would say around high school students or upper class, you know, high level students would use these. And these are the preferred ones. Uh, you can let kids use this, but honestly, for younger children, I would stick to this one. The third one is kind of somewhere between fancy, between not fancy. And this is one that you would see in a lot of videos, probably. Again, so this one is, sorry, it's been used. Um, it's kind of sticky. It's similar to the watercolor pan, pan watercolor, sorry, but it has this kind of goodie here, which you can take out. And the nice thing about this is it's a travel case. So you can get smaller ones, you get big, bigger ones. Um, also, with these particular, with these particular colors, once these colors are finished, you can actually replicate and buy the smaller colors and put it in. So difference between this one and this one uh, this particular kind once the colors are finished they're finished you can't buy the separate little tablets in some countries I believe you can but again it depends on where you are so for this one it's slightly more upper scale price uh, you can get the individual color tubes and you can put them in here so when you're finished and you've got a mixing tray in here as well which you can also take out which is fantastic. You can take this out. Sorry, I'm trying to see if I can get this out. Okay, it's not going to come. So if you need to wash this, it can come out. Sorry, it's not coming out right now. 
So these are the three different kinds that you can use for your watercolors, watercolor cap. Now for this particular worksheet, I'll be sticking to tube. Okay, you can use this. You can use that and you can use this. But for this workshop, I'll be using tube watercolors. So the other thing I would want to show you is something that you're going to use to mix your watercolors. Now, in light of today's environment, previously I would have recommended that you use kind of um, what I would, well, when I was growing up, we called the meat trays. You can use like polystyrene, you know, the polystyrene trays that you would get. Um, or you could even use like lunch wrap paper to mix your watercolors. But these days, I think a few people, fewer and more, more and more people are not using that. So really what you want to do is you want to invest in something that you can mix your watercolors. So this is kind of brand new. I'm going to open it, see if I can open it for you. There we go. And that's what it looks like. Okay. Fantastic thing is you can set your colors kind of here. And this is the section you mix. And no idea what this is for. I think it's to hold your brush maybe. So you get different kinds. I have an older kind which is a metal case. This is plastic. Uh, this is washable. So I guess if you're going to do watercolors this is useful. This can be used in conjunction with any of your watercolor sets for mixing. So The next thing I want to talk about is the kind of brushes that you're going to use. Now, I'm not brand specific. Um, so for watercolor brushes, you really want to use like a round or pointy brush. This is very dry. And this is kind of what they look like. Now, when you buy them in the shop, they do come with a little tube like this. And the idea is that you, when you store it, to keep the brush bristles in place. You use this part. So just to demonstrate to you, I think it's like here. Want to get it? So basically, to keep your brush nice and clean, you would then keep the your brush bristles like that in a pointed direction, and then you would use this. This is quite small. So anyway, you, each watercolor brush that you get has that plastic bit. Now. Be careful when you buy a flat brush. A flat brush is usually like a square shape here, this part. That is for acrylic. That cannot be used for watercolors. You really want to get water, a watercolor set or you want to get round brushes. So taking care of your watercolor brushes, um, make sure that their hairs are wet and pointy. And then of course, when you're done, you have to use this bit to cover it. Um, sometimes you will get bits of brush hair that will go astray. You really want to cut that off or you want to pull it out. Don't keep it. So anyway, so today's workshop, there is no preference for size. You'll see that each brush has a different size on it. I like to use 14. I like to use another size 30. And then this one is... Gosh, I can't even see the size anymore. Yeah, two size thirties. So a size eight or a size four. That depends on what detail you want to paint. Lastly, I want to talk about paper. Okay, now this one is kind of important. You can't really see on my screen. So for watercolors, um, don't use sketching paper. You can, but you cannot. Why I say that? If you're going to use normal paper or printing paper or sulfite paper, it doesn't have absorbency. Basically what that means is it cannot absorb the liquid of the water that you're going to apply on it quite well. And then it becomes like that buckly, buckle shape, like buckles up, it bends up. So you get various kinds of watercolor paper. First of all, you get cold pressed paper, which is out expensive. Now, watercolor paper can vary in price, depending on your budget. You can get top range watercolor paper to extremely cheap paper. And also, the texture, I want to talk about the texture, I'm going to show it up here. 
Most watercolour paper is quite texturised. When you put your hand against it, it's also very thick compared to normal sulphite paper. It's got a texture to it, which can absorb the water better. Sometimes you'll get extremely textured watercolour paper. Sometimes you'll get like just a little bit of texture. Again, it depends on your budget for what you want to create. I'm going to suggest that when you do watercolours, absolutely do not use printer paper. Do not use ordinary sulphide paper. It won't come out the same. So go to your art shop and find out what kind of watercolour paper they do have. They'll give you a whole range. I can think of brands specifically. Cold press, not advertising, just saying. Um, Windsor and Newton cold press, or you could use... Uh, another one that I like to use, I forgot the name, um, it comes like in a little box. And then you get Canson as well, Canson is a known product. Otherwise, sometimes they have Fabriano, which is also on the upper end. Otherwise, you can ask them to choose, um, you know, to introduce to you like a cheaper format or students watercolour paper. So for this purpose of this class, I'll be using a slightly cheaper paper, but make sure that it's textured. And lastly, you're going to want to need something else. Normally, I use a tissue. Um, well, I used to use like paper towel or tissue. Nowadays, I think, I guess, people don't want to waste so much. So I like to use something called a sponge. Yeah, just a cheap little sponge. And of course, you want to use any old kind of jar, you know, for your water. Okay, I'm going to start with the little copy cup. So let's get started with our first class. So for this lesson, um, let's start off with how to use the materials that you've got. So once you've got your watercolors set out, now what I've done here is I've squeezed out three colors. I've squeezed out yellow and I've squeezed out ultramarine blue and scarlet red, so my primary colors. Now, how do you hold a watercolour brush? So first of all, a watercolour brush has to be round. So this point has to be kind of pointy when you kind of put it together like that, it's nice and round. Another kind of brush that you might see is a flat brush, which is kind of like a square or a rectangle. That's used for acrylic, not really suitable for watercolours. So if you want to start off with the basics, you want to invest in a round brush. Typically, as I've mentioned before, they come with a little tube, which you then put over your brush once you're finished. Okay, so this is the brush size 14 that I'm going to be using. You can use either a size 8 or 4, depending on you. So your setup would include your water, your sponge, your cloth or a tissue, and your mixing tray, and some watercolour paper. Again, I stress this again. Please use watercolour paper or textured watercolour paper when you're doing this. So, importance of holding your brush. There are three sections. So, this is the brush side behind that. And this is the handle part. So, here basically this is where you hold it. Pretty much like a pencil. So, when you're holding it, So when you're holding it, this is how you're going to hold it. So what I want to do is just play around with the different types of strokes so to get familiar with it. Now, why I say this, um, it's different to holding a pencil and it's good practice to familiarize yourself with um, memory muscle. So this is something that your hand, that you can train your hand to do and to feel. So I'm going to start with kind of Let's use an ultramarine blue and I'm going to mix it here. So you want to mix in your palette first. By the way, um, if you want to use, you don't have to get a fancy mixing palette like this. You can use either what I would refer to a polystyrene tray or land wrapping paper or another plastic tray. Either way. Okay, now, so just to show you the strokes. So when you hold your brush, kind of like, I'm gonna to point to it on this side. Just practice my strokes. I'm gonna go really slow and 
go up. So let's do about five strokes this way. So go starting up at an angle, press it down, and then lift it up like that. So there we go. And I'm using blue so that you can see. So these are thick lines. Okay. Of course, if you want to do a thin line, you're going to hold your brush kind of more up, like in a vertical position, and there it produces a thin line. So like on the point here, kind of like that. So thick lines and thin lines. Then of course, if you want to practice again, kind of go from like a thin line to a thick line and then lift it up and then do that thin line thick line and then do that like that and then thin line thick line and go up like that okay so another thing you can practice kind of just doing angle lines like that mm. just anywhere on your fat you can kind of do this kind of go like play around and then do that lift it and go up do another one start with a pointy edge kind of go like this and then go like that and then like that very light so this is just to get the feel for your brush and get used to how it functions and works also it's to develop memory muscle so if you want to do like little leaves for example you go like that so another stroke you can practice is kind of going like up and then down. So I'll show you the side. So what you want to do is you kind of hold it towards you like that and then turn it and go back in. Go like this and go back in. It's easier to do it on an angle you can move it like that and then go back in to there so practicing different brush strokes can help you and when you clean your brush um, again you want to kind of like stir it not splash it think of it as a teaspoon and then to get the excess water off you kind of do that and you can use a sponge or a cloth there. So I, I might do another color or I might not. So let's do a smaller size brush. So I'm going to take a smaller size. I think this is a 30. Yeah, okay, small brush. Let's do my scarlet red. I'm going to mix it somewhere here. Okay. And again, this is where you put your colors and this is where you do your mixing. So. Let's try it again. So I'm going to go above each line, again at an angle, kind of like that. So it's kind of like this. So I'm doing it like up, and then do that. Up, down, and then go up. Up, down, and then go up. Up, down, and then go up. Okay, and then if you want to do like thin lines, completely hold it up like that. Something simple. Just do it like that. Play around a bit. And then I'm going to do the same what I did here. Thin lines, thick lines, thin lines. Just keep practicing. Your brush strokes so you can get used to it 
and familiar with it. Okay. And again here, play around a bit. Got a pretty thick of that. Find the space. Thin. Like that. And then I want to practice the same that I've done here. So I kind of go like here, sorry. On this edge of my paper, and kind of do this. Go like that. And you see I'm turning it. Okay, let me do it in an angle again. So what I'm doing is I'm going like this. And then like that. And then like this. And then like that. So memory muscle for your hand. And then like this. And like that. Just practicing. Okay, there you have it. So different brush strokes for you to practice before you start painting.